We're back with another Build Biology. This is probably gonna be the best one. I, maybe I'm a little biased. It's not just a, a guest, it's, it's more of a family ordeal here. We have someone you haven't met yet that you need to know. What's up, Forrest? What up, guys? Forrest, <laughs> tell everybody what you brought us, what your role is. Who are you, Forrest? Who am I? Let's start there, because that's the easy part. Uh, I am shop manager and race spotter for Hoonigan Racing, Ken Block. Yeah, and this machine that was brought with us today. And this machine, this is a 1965 Ford Mustang, affectionately known as the Hoonicorn. This one is actually the only one we have, but it is version two. Yeah, it looks really cool. And it's obviously a bit different. These big Johnnies hanging out. Those guys just chilling. Usually we ask, you know, hey, what's, what's kind of done to the, what's not done to it? What is, <laughs> what is not done to this? It's obviously not a 1965 Mustang. <laughs> Only original metal panels are the A and uh, B C pillars and roof skin. The roof so actually it. is though. That this is, is metal. actually off of a '65 Mustang. It has a hear number it. at one point. You can hear so, it. So yeah, metal, 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 metal. See, and from all the videos and everything else I've seen, I expected like a carbon fiber roof. And there There's is a lot of carbon. Um, doors are actually more or less original to to the Mustang. Um, door handles, tail lights, stuff like that. Anything sort of past the original body lines has been added. So all these are carbon oh, over flares. Past the original body lines. I'd say that's quite a bit past <laughs> the original body lines. She's got some healthy width. Fenders, side skirts, front bumper, front lip, all that, and uh, all carbon. It's obviously all one off. It's all one off. And, and where was this made? ASD Performance uh, out of North Carolina were the ones that originally pieced this whole car together. And talking specifically about the body, what you now see in carbon fiber, these were originally actually made out of sheet metal. Front and rear quarters, they were uh, hand rolled at one point, and that's where we were able to pull this stuff off of. Really? English wheel or? English wheel, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Was that ever on the car? Were was those it? ever on the car? Yeah. Just yeah, for mock-up. Just for mock-up? Yep. And then this was all made from it. <laughs> exactly. So and we've got multiple sets. I mean, I this is a... Uh, how do you say it? This is a, a Gymkhana car, a demo car. It's yeah. not necessarily a race car, but we still approach it just like we would any of our race yeah, cars. So we, we've got five of every part, um, whether it be body or drive line, we've got everything we need. You're a step need. ahead of me on that one. I, <laughs> I, was like, I, I was just about to ask, I know you have to have uh, extra panels because this thing gets driven. As a lot of people have seen, this gets driven. <laughs> And you know, something else is kind of fun to note, right? We've got another nine inches of width, give or take. Yeah. And the reason for that is you're hiding a 295, and that's a Toyo R888R tire. You can see almost a whole tire. 295, I'm just gonna go off my head here. I think that's about 12 inches wide. Yeah. So this car has four feet of tire mm. and breaks all of them loose <laughs> in every forward gear. <laughs> You know what? So. I never really think about it that way. The four feet of tire. Four like, feet. I mean, how tall are you? I'm like six three. <laughs> like four feet is that's that's a lot the, of tire. That's the here on tire to me. So. And that's not just an average tire. I mean, that's pretty much an R compound grooved slick. That's quite a lot of traction. Give and or take. the 1552 wheels, which we we'll always see <laughs> the on 52 cars. wheels. Obviously, everything in the rear is carbon, 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 carbon. This yeah. piece right here is actually steel. The rear diffuser and all that. That's rad. God, it's so wide. Let's see what's going on. All right, it's two-man job as always. I know. Good Lord, what's going on back here? Big lift pumps, surge tanks, very redundant for what we have going on here, but because this thing moves twice the fuel, yeah. we need that. Yeah. And this actually gives you a little bit of a better idea as to that pushrod suspension. Yeah. Very similar to the front and the way everything's packaged inboard with the dampers. Yeah. And again, it's just to allow for uh, an upper and lower control arm like we have here. Obviously mm -hmm. we have rear drive shafts, a big differential in the middle, but that just gives you a little bit of a better idea as to what all that yeah. looks like. And some of the details inside the yeah. trunk, I mean, all the B-roll panels and, I mean, yeah, it's had- It's had some blemishes. Hit, that's, I mean, that's what we do. It's been hit. It's yeah. not a that's show car. Cool. And that's why I respect it so much because there is so much detail actually going on in it but you know it gets worked. You know it gets worked over and worked over again. Wow, okay, now I see the sway bar. This is better to talk about underneath. We'll talk about yeah. that stuff underneath. 
This is one of the most wild machines I've ever seen. It can take an old man, young kids, everybody's united in this, but what was behind the design of this thing? Was Ken very involved there? Ken was super involved, as he is with just everything we yeah. do. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was months and months of design and mock-up um, prior to even seeing this thing in the flesh between uh, Ken and the marketing team, everybody else involved, just to get the look yeah. more than anything. Not even concerned with performance to start with, just to get the look that they wanted. And you go all over the world with these guys and there's people that barely even speak English, but they know Hoonicorn <laughs> yeah. and Mustang. Exactly. They can say that. You know, so there was a, a lot of time, a lot of R&D that went into making a car that was not just functional, but very yeah. unique as well. And a, a lot of planning for the future of how, what's the longevity of the car? How long are we going to drive it? And how many body panels are we gonna go through? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I mean, these guys got a lot of time out of this car, you know, filming things like Gymkhana 7, and then all of a sudden one day, Ken wanted to go up Pikes Peak. And to go up Pikes Peak and to have started, you know, with version one being a naturally aspirated high compression V8, to yeah. drive that to 14,000 feet, could you do it? Absolutely. Yeah. But at that point, you're at, you know, a third of the power or whatnot. So to give him a car that was more or less exciting and capable of driving to that altitude, yeah we came up with version 2.0, which Those is similar from the outside until you start looking under the hood. Right. And that's where the addition of twin turbos and almost double the power yeah. and stuff like that came from. And those are images burned into my <laughs> head. Everything that I've seen on that going up the hill. Cut to some footage of that real quick. <laughs> Cut to some footage of this, check yeah. this out, ready? This is actually, there's actually a really good shot of this and we left this on the car because it was just that sketchy, but that right there mm -hmm. was what Ken rubbed against uh, one of the guardrails, like above oh. tree line Pikes Peak. <laughs> like a 500 foot drop Dude, off to one side and that was it. Perfectly so we, Yeah, we liked it, we wanted to leave it. <laughs> That's guardrail height. No way. <laughs> That's awesome. Now let's get to the business end on the inside where the boss sits. Awesome. Speaking of body stuff, these are still all metal doors. Dude, I noticed this last time when, when this came in here, it was just like, that never happens on race cars, at least anything that I've ever done. <laughs> it's so nice, it just fits. There's a lot less going on in here than I thought there would well, be. Well, I mean, if you look at it, the seat's right here. Yeah. He's sitting right on the door itself. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the A-pillar. Yeah. And, and you look at modern race cars and everybody's sitting another eight inches inside yeah. of the cockpit, another four inches behind but everything. There's a bar right here, yeah. and the ladder comes up to here, so. Well, I mean, that's like the steering wheel. Yeah. Look how far that is off the door. Yeah. But back. it's what you're forced to work around when you're choosing a car that was built in the 60s. Right. So there so. it adds a little bit more to the element of fear that he has <laughs> going on, which this doesn't make sense to normal people. Like, no. I mean, it's stout. The underneath this car, it's, it's a fully tubular chassis. It looks actually a lot like NASCAR from underneath, a lot of yeah. square box tubing. Dash is carbon, seats are carbon Kevlar backed. Beautiful just bead roll panels in here. Yeah. Do you get a shot of some that. of that stuff? I mean, yeah, that's really cool. But that is a handbrake. Yeah. That, uh, that does work to unlock the center diff. So this being an all-wheel drive Mustang, when Ken pulls that, huh. center diff opens up, he's, allowed, he's able to independently lock the rear axle. What's the button on top? Button on the top locks <laughs> the center diff so he can build boost and more or less launch this thing. Sick. So it runs off of Motec? Motec, yep. M150 Motec. Oh look, look, original, original VIN tag, no big deal. What? The original car, look at that, see that color? That original car was actually red. All right, let's get to the obvious bit, which is underneath the hood. Ready? Now this is what I want to know, because I know nothing about what's going on here. 410 cubic inch uh, Roush V8. So what is that, like 6.7 liter V8, more or less? Because it's twin turbo, it is a little bit lower compression than the high compression version in mm -hmm. uh, Unicorn 1.0. A big set of Garrett twins on there. The one thing you'll notice about this is, first off, beautiful exhaust manifolds. They're yeah. feeding both of these turbos, except there's no intercooler anywhere in this package. Yeah. Couple of reasons for that. One, there's not a lot of room, mm -hmm. and then two, to make big reliable horsepower and to run meth, it's not necessarily require running an air cooler. Yeah. When Ken was doing uh, Gymkhana 7, 
with this car, he did it with an open base helmet. It mm -hmm. was naturally aspirated. When you watch Climb Kana, he's got a full on drag helmet yeah. with like a breather box system hooked up because methanol is just, it's horrible. Potent, for this. Very just potent. can't take it. It's a higher octane, but it burns cooler. Therefore they have to use more of it to make similar horsepower. That's also why this thing's got two injectors. So those are, I believe, 1,050 cc injectors. A piece. A piece. And there's two and in there's each. And there's two on each, so yeah. 16 injectors on this thing. That's a cool fuel rail. Switzer. Switzer Dynamics did all of the version two swap. So anything to do with this beautiful custom two-piece billet insane. manifold? I just love to see all the actual marking in it and everything else. Yeah, it just the gorgeous, feels crazy. Unreal. And that was a chunk of billet, like the size of a milk crate that started up to make I that. just love watching that be made as well. It's just like watching the machines just take everything off of it. This is all custom, just yeah. completely built for, for this car. car. Yep. That's awesome. That's Push amazing. on suspension. So that was really a, a combination of working with Von Gitten Jr., mm -hmm. RTR and ASD that came up to design a suspension package that would work in a car, yeah. or work in a Mustang in this case, that was all wheel drive. So we couldn't fit suspension dampers where you normally would have them because we have front drive shafts. Utilizing a push rod style suspension allows us to keep the shock absorbers inboard, mm -hmm. much like you'd see on like a Formula yeah. One or an Indy car. That's exactly and then as thinking. the suspension cycles, you're still gonna get similar amounts of travel, but in a tighter area. Yeah. Because you're taking into consideration the movement of that push rod and then the actual compression of that uh, damper itself. So that's really the only way this car works. And that was a lot of thought and a lot of R&D and design that went into making that what it is. So V1. How much power? 845, uh, same displacement, 410 uh, cubic inch, about 6.7 liter. Mm -hmm. uh, naturally aspirated V8. This is not naturally aspirated. Obviously. And this one's about 1400 horsepower. So almost double. Double. Not that good at math, but somewhere around there. Torque is a little less. Torque is like 1250. V2, V2. double the car. I can talk about this all day. I'll never get the chance to see underneath this thing again. I might get to see this again but I'll never get to see underneath it. I've never even seen it on a lift. I'm, let's, let's check it out. Man. I I've really want to get this on a lift. lift. <laughs> I know everybody wants to see it. I'm so curious to what's going on under all of this. So you've never seen this on the lift? No, I don't think this has ever been on a lift. We might change the oil now. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, speaking of oil, this thing did literally just get back from Jim Conn 10 filming. So full disclaimer, we wiped the outside down and the underside. That's why we got to shoot in here and do this. We were lucky that yeah. you guys were by. We don't get to see this like ever. I mean, yeah. first things first, <laughs> that's a big old motor. That's a big old motor. You can see the sump, you can see all the oil lines. Yeah. You can see the front diff ahead of that motor. Yeah. Because that's the front of your motor. So your diff is sticking out past that steering rack, obviously, right here. Yeah. I love it though, like the, the steering rack supports and everything just ground right down. <laughs> Gearbox Whoa. is just flattened right out. I think. Man, that hangs w relatively low. It does. That is actually one of the lowest That's points. That's probably the lowest point in the yeah. car, isn't it? I think most of these scars were from filming in London when we had. Matt LeBlanc in this thing? Oh, yeah. What's this button do? That one? Okay. I guess that was some pretty rough terrain. <laughs> this is a city street. Well, tonight. I mean, that's the thing. Like, this has a little bit of suspension, but it doesn't really jump. I mean, it jumps. It doesn't really land. <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest questions I have is all the differential stuff. Well, I mean, it's kind of cool if you look at the gearbox mm -hmm. and then what is really a transfer case. Yeah. It looks like it's out of a truck. Doesn't yeah, it? it does. And I mean, believe it or not, this, this Sedev uh, sequential box was originally designed for uh, Dakar trucks. Oh, wow. And how much horsepower can it, oh, well, we know what it can take now. I mean, we've taken some dogs off of the dog rings, but like this thing really hasn't spit really? out gears. Sedev makes some amazing so, stuff. This has been the only trans that's been in the car? We have a spare box, so we have swapped back and forth depending on ratios mm -hmm. or if we do need to rebuild, but it's just mostly been yeah. just rounded dog rings, which is, you know, a product of actually using the thing. Now we can see the suspension a little bit better. I want to pull a wheel off as well. What kind of brakes are you running on this? These are Willwood and rotors are 13 inch front and rear. The uh, upright itself is a, is a custom piece of billet. That is one thick boy. 
all these billet arms. And has he gone through many of these arms, Leek? Not tons of mm -hmm. arms. We've definitely gone through some uprights. Definitely see a, a oh, few yeah. little rashes here. Oh yeah, and it's fun. <laughs> it's fun to see like where the wheels limited out on the arm itself. Oh wow. That is crazy. But pretty universal. So what is it? Left front is the same as right rear in terms mm -hmm. of the upright. So we can we can swap those out as need be. Get a shot of this push shot. This is kind of cool. Yeah. So obviously pass through sway bar right through the front of the frame that then ties in to the push rod, which is connected then again to the control arm. Mm -hmm. So as the suspension moves, this whole arm rocks. And that's what's actually compressing your damper just to right. the left. And those are both, again, inboard mounted. Pretty wild if you think about it, because that's yeah. not a lot of damper. But again, what helps you with that travel is the movement of the rod, not just the actual right. stroke of the damper right. itself. Do you have any trouble with uh, the axles or half shafts or anything like not, that? Not horribly. So where was all the chassis stuff done? Because it just looks unreal. Yeah, all the, uh, all the chassis, any of the fab work was all done via RTR in North Carolina. Awesome. A lot of stuff gets done in North Carolina for race cars. <laughs> Man, it's like everything is so overbuilt, but <laughs> on something like this, you never know if it's overbuilt because he's going to overdrive it. Uh, you know, again, it's still engineered. So if you touch a corner, I mean, you're, you're only breaking from here out. Like we're yeah. not, we're not dealing with, you know, hard body mounts or anything. Yeah. You know, all these joints have, you know, fail points built into them. You know, we do know that the uprights have certain failure points and we're happy with that because it, it keeps it on the outside of the car and we're not dealing with chassis yeah. issues. It's a mess. Yeah. Um, but know, that's but my it's a car that gets part. used. Like this thing doesn't just do car shows. Exactly why it's my favorite part of it because you get to see all the blemishes and all the stuff that's happened. The nice thing about filming is, you know, the, the way we measure it, you know, the way you measure success is, is by getting the shots and getting yeah. the car back out. Yeah. You know, you go racing in your first year or last, but filming we always win. Right. You know, it's just, this is the reality of it all. Exactly. It's not always easy. It looks easy, you know, but there's millions of hours spent underneath this car putting it back together. Yeah, I have to pull the wheel off. We got to see the manifold. We got to see yep. what the brakes look like, what the uprights look like. Well, first we see the brakes. We know they're wheel Like I said, same brakes front and rear. So the manifold looks crazy. And we got the wastegate dump right here. Does that even affect the tire at how close that gets? You don't I mean, even notice because the it, tires I'll, are I'll melting. Tell you, no, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, it affects the pedals <laughs> that are right there. Oh, right? man. Right, because this, this, uh, this is all your hydraulic lines going into your pedal boxes. Yeah, how many shoes right does Ken go through right now? Is that I melting think they his feet? I get a little feet? warm, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, right I love all the stainless goes. lines going into the manifold. So I'm super excited you guys got to come by and actually show us this thing. Absolutely. Well, and it's a cool opportunity, you know. We work for a guy that doesn't have to do this stuff. Yeah. You know, he just wanted to do this because it'd be different. So yeah. why not? This is so, a hobby for him and, and we have a job out of it. So yeah. that, that's pretty rad. No, humbling to be a part of it. For yeah, sure. definitely. It's really cool. If anybody else wants to see this in action, if you haven't seen it in action already, watch the Climb Kana or we got Gem 10 coming out soon. Yeah, Gem 10 this fall. So this check, fall. Check it out there. I was around for it. It was, it was decent. <laughs> so you already got to see it. So I can't wait to see it. Glad to have you on. Thank you guys. It's so pretty. We've talked about it so much. Now it's time to be about it. But let's fire it up and, and see Ab what's... Absolutely. Hope you guys enjoyed that. It's one of my favorite cars. If you want to see some more behind the scenes, tune in November 16th to Gymkhana Files. You'll catch all the behind the scenes action with the Hunicorn plus multiple other vehicles. Stay tuned.